Well, welcome back to school this week. We only have three more weeks of classes. Several more videos to make. Today I'm wearing the last of my red wings. Poor red wings. We lost in the playoffs for the first time in 20 years. So very sad. So I don't know who I'm going to root for now. Bruins beat them. Always a Red Wings fan, though. Still very sad. One of the original six teams in hockey. Anyhow, today we talked a bit about factored form. Um, if you remember, oops, we have us. Why is that funny? Out of practice. Where are we at? All right, I think I got it worked out. Um, let's see, today is 4-28-2014. Um, we know about st standard form. We have AX squared plus BX plus C. We should remember that this is the y-intercept. This tells us if it's positive, it's up. And if it's negative, it's down, right? Um, and then we also need to know the axis of symmetry, which is negative B over 2A. So there's your B and there's your A. Okay, so those are things we should know. We talked about standard form today, and that would be F of X equals X, and it could be plus or minus A, and then X plus or minus B. Oops. Or um, another way of writing the factored form is actually I think I like this way better. Um, we can do uh, f of x, and then we have a. Oops. And we have a, and then we have x minus r one, and x minus r two. And R stands for roots. And then hopefully you remember that the roots, it's kind of backwards or sideways, but the roots are where it crosses the x-axis. So these are the x-intercepts. So you can see when it's in factored form, it's real easy to find those roots, okay? So we're gonna work on some factoring, all right? So when we factor, um, as we did with this, the first thing we look at is we look for the GCF. The GCF, as you should know, is the greatest common factor. And basically what that means is we're looking for the biggest number that will divide into both of these. So hopefully we know that 6 is a factor of 6 and 24. So all they did here was they took 6x minus 24 and they said the GCF of both of these is 6 so I'm going to divide both of these by 6 so because 6 was my divider I put that on the outside then we say 6 divided by 6 is 1 or just x we bring our minus in here and we say 24 divided by 6 is 4 Okay, and then here you should be able to see that it, one of the roots of this equation would be uh, 4 if this was a squared, but it's not. We're just going to work on some factoring here, okay? Um, and that's basically what they did here is they just pulled out 6 times x and 6 times 4, which would give you 24, but I think this way is a little bit um, less confusing. So let's look over here. Um, I have 3x and 36. Um, so the first thing you look at is that no lower number. I know 3 will go into 3, and will 3 go into 36? It sure does. So I divide each one of these by 3. So I pull out my 3, I divide by. I know 3 divided by 3 is 1, or just x. I have my plus, and then I have 36 divided by 3, which is 12. So my answer is uh, 3 times x plus 12. And then if you wanted to see if you're right, you could distribute the 3 right back. 3 times x is 3x plus 3 times 12 is 36. So when I multiply that back out, I get back to the original problem. So I know I did that right. Okay, let's look at another example here that's maybe not quite so easy. OK, 
Okay, here, let's skip down to number four. This one's a little bit harder. I have 42 and um, 35. Um, so I'm going to look at this, and I know that um, 35 only has the factors of 1, 5, 7, and 35. So I want to look at all those and see if this has any common ones. And 7 goes into 42 also. So we can divide by 7 here. And I know 7 was my um, dividing factor. 42 divided by 7 is 6. And let's keep the x. And then we have minus. And then 35 divided by 7 is 5. So my answer is 7 times 6x minus 5. Okay. And again, if I multiply this back out, I get back to my original problem. So pretty simple. All right, um, looking down at this one, remember there's a 1 there. Um, so this one, um, only factors of 1 are 1. And this happens to be a negative 1. So really what they want you to do here is divide each one by negative 1. So we bring our negative 1 out front. And then negative 1 and negative 1 is a positive 1. Make sure you treat this as negative 9 divided by negative 1, and that's a positive 9. Or I could, this is my answer, and again, if I distribute that back out, I get negative x minus 9. I could also just write this as negative x plus 9. I don't really need the one there, but either one of these is um, acceptable. Okay, so that's it. Find the GCF, divide each one by the GCF, put in your parentheses, divide it out. So I'd like for you guys to complete 3 and 6 on your own outside of your notes. And then we'll go over it tomorrow and work on some more factoring. Have a great night. Get to bed early so you're not so tired tomorrow.